I'm Matthew Motors, and this is the Moto Z, Motorola's flagship smartphone of 2016. And this is the Moto Z Play, Motorola's mid-range smartphone of 2016. But both of these phones share something in common. Both of these phones support modules. Now I figured I'd review them at the same time so that you guys can decide which phone is the better phone for you. So let's start off with the design. And the first thing you're gonna notice is how incredibly thin the Moto Z really is. In fact, it's so thin that Motorola had to completely remove the 3.5 millimeter jack from the bottom of the phone. Now don't worry, there is a USB type C to 3.5 millimeter dongle in the box. So you can continue using your headphones like you always did as long as you have the dongle on you. Both phones have a glass back, so when you touch them, fingerprints will show up. So I obviously suggest slapping a dbrand skin like this one on it to prevent those fingerprints and also add a little bit of style to your phone. Now, if the thought of not having a headphone jack scares you, the Moto Z Play still has a headphone jack on the bottom because it's much thicker. And also because it's much thicker, you're also getting the benefit of having a bigger battery, which I'll talk about a little bit later. Both phones have a fingerprint scanner and both phones have a micro SD card slot that support up to 256 gigabytes of additional storage. The displays on both phones are 5.5 inches and they also happen to be AMOLED. So you're gonna get those beautiful, vibrant colors and true blacks. Now the biggest difference is that the Moto Z Play only has a 1080p screen while the Moto Z has a QHD screen. In terms of color reproduction, you're not gonna notice much of a difference between either phone, but if you have them both side by side together, you're gonna notice that the QHD screen on the Moto Z is a lot sharper. The sound on both phones is coming out from a front facing speaker, which is actually an earpiece and speaker combo. Now this is a lot better than having a speaker on the bottom of the phone or on the back because the sound hits you directly. Now it's not the loudest speaker in the world, but it's loud enough and I think most people will be satisfied with it. But the most unique experience about the Moto Z and Z Play has to be the modules. Now modules have been done before, but I think Motorola finally did it right. There's a 16 pin connector on the bottom of both phones and all you have to do is slap the module on the back and a magnetic connection takes place. And as soon as you connect those mods, you get a, a prompt from the software saying it's ready and you can go ahead and begin using it. It's very, very simple. Now, the problem with modules is that I don't see too much value in them right now. Now, there's a bunch to choose from like the speaker, there's a Hasselblad camera that can zoom in up to 10 times, you have a power pack which adds additional battery life and there's a Pico projector that allows you to beam whatever's on your phone onto a wall. The problem is these modules are more expensive than if you were to buy these items separately. And also, for example, let's say you were to go out and buy the JBL speaker which sounds great and works great, but you're giving up use to your phone because most likely you're gonna place it on a desk so that everybody can listen to the music. Also, if you buy an external speaker instead, you can use it with any phone instead of being tied to your Motorola device. Now, I'm not saying Motorola is doing a bad thing by providing a modular experience. I think they're doing the right thing. I just don't think there's a module out right now that says I have to buy this phone because of this module. Besides that, they're all interchangeable. So if I use a module on my Moto Z, I can also use it on my Moto Z Play and vice versa. Motorola promises that future Moto Z phones in 2017 and going on forward, any mods you buy today will work on future devices. Now, that being said, my favorite thing about the whole modular experience is actually the style shells. I think that's a fantastic way to bring a unique look to your smartphone without having to buy a bulky case. You simply just slap it on the back and you completely change the way your phone looks and feels. Now, the Moto Z does come with a wood ash style shell, which looks and feels great. And the Moto Z Play comes with a black leather style shell, which also looks and feels great. The battery life on the Moto Z is okay. I got about a full day's use with about three hours of screen on time, which is actually pretty good considering it only has a 2600 milliamp battery. Now, because the Moto Z Play is a lot thicker, you're gonna get a much bigger battery at 3510 milliamps. Now, the battery life on the Moto Z Play is absolutely insane. I was easily pushing up to two days of use before having to charge. I was getting screen on times of five hours, which is very rare for me. In terms of performance, it's a different story. The Moto Z is obviously the faster performer, as it should be, since it has a Snapdragon 820 with four gigabytes of RAM, compared to the three gigabytes of RAM and Snapdragon 625 inside of the Moto Z Play. 
When it comes to day-to-day -day tasks, I promise you, you won't know the difference in terms of fluidity. They both run fast and fluid. It's more when you come to play games. The Moto Z just does a better job. It has a better GPU inside, so you're not gonna get any stuttering and the games are just gonna run and load up faster. I also think the software experience contributes to the performance as well. Uh, they're both running Android Marshmallow, but the big thing about Motorola phones is they always run a very clean and stock Android experience. Now they do have some of their own personal tweaks on the phone, like having that ambient display where every time you pick up the phone, the time will go on, or if you move your hand over it, it'll show you your notifications. You can also do cool gestures like twist to bring up the camera, or you can chop twice to turn on the flashlight. Now also, I just heard recently that Motorola is bringing uh, the update to Android 7.0 to both of these phones. And finally, let's talk about the camera. And this is one area that the results were completely different. The Moto Z offers a much better camera experience than the Z Play. Let's start with the Z. It has a 13 megapixel shooter with an f1.8 aperture. And most of the time it takes fantastic photos, even under low light. Now it's definitely not the best smartphone camera on the market, but it's definitely top five. Whereas the Moto Z Play with its 16 megapixel rear facing camera and f2.0 aperture needed the perfect optimal settings to take good photos. I also found with the Z Play the auto focusing to be a little bit on the slow side. All right, so here's my closing thoughts. Motorola has completely nailed the modular experience. They're easy to use and fun to play with. However, none of these mods offer a unique experience. It still makes a lot more sense to go out there and buy an external Bluetooth speaker that works with any of your devices as opposed to being only used on your Moto Z or Moto Z Play. I think Motorola needs to find a mod that makes the whole smartphone experience unique compared to anything out there. Now in terms of smartphones, are these great smartphones? Well, the Moto Z is, it's fast, it's fluid, has a good display, but suffers from poor battery life. Now it does have turbo charging, which is great, but it also doesn't offer wireless charging. Whereas the Moto Z Play has great performance, great battery life, but suffers from a chunkier design and a poor camera experience. It also has turbo charging, but it doesn't have wireless charging either. Now I think if you value a camera, you're gonna to wanna to lean towards the Moto Z, but if you want fantastic battery life with good performance and you don't play games, then go for the Moto Z Play. So what do you guys think of the Moto Z and Moto Z Play? Let me know in the comments below. And if you have one already, let me know you like or dislike about it. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, feel free to hit that like button. If you're new to the channel, subscribe. And as always, I will see you in the next video.